Hi, welcome along to another video. This time, I'm going to take a look at this book from 1974. It's around 45 years ago. Snowpack, Cloud Seeding and the Colorado River. A Technology Assessment of Weather Modification by Leo Weisbecker. So this book is covering what the effects of the winter orographic snowpack augmentation program throughout the upper Colorado River Basin will potentially be. This program was due to be implemented after a five year pilot project. So we're talking about 25 years after the wider implementation of silver iodide cloud seeding for weather modification purposes. We'll jump straight in and have a look at chapter five which is mainly looking at the environmental effects such as the effects on animal life, streams, lakes and silver iodide in the environment. So chapter five, we'll take in most of this first piece and then go through a couple of other bits from the rest of the chapter. So in about 1930, the upper Colorado River Basin began to enter a dry period. Over many years, Wosa will affect the plants and animals of the upper basin. Identifying subtle long-term effects in biological communities that face very different environmental stresses from one year to the next is difficult. So 25 years after the tech is around, they know already that identifying the long-term effects on biology is difficult. If we cannot predict precise environmental effects for Wosa, we can describe the natural environmental stresses caused by winter snow and show how Wosa might affect them. So confirmation there, the long-term changes cannot be identified. So weather modification, definitely a high-risk activity in 1974. And those of you educated from the 1970s onwards will probably remember when you had your lesson on weather modification or not. So moving on. Changes in the temperature and the amount of moisture available will encourage some kinds of vegetation and discourage others. In turn, changes in vegetation will encourage some kinds of wildlife and discourage others. With the long-term average increase in snowfall that Rosa will bring, we can expect a gradual shift of plants to lower elevation. We will see the timber line retreat to lower elevations over a period of many years. The whole ecological system will eventually become involved if the basic food input and vegetation is disturbed. The species of mammals, birds and insects that depend upon a food source will reflect changes in the abundance of that food source. In turn, the predators for these vegetarian species will also be affected. Eventually, nature scavengers, those life forms that feed upon carrion or are responsible for the decomposition of organic matter, will also respond to the changes. Even the character and formations of the soil will in time be altered by a change in the kind of vegetation growing on it. So they don't know the long-term effects but going by what's proposed to happen and what it will do, you can predict what changes might occur, such as what's just been stated. The high mountain streams are fed mainly by snow so that they run fullest in mid-spring. Wosa would extend the period of high melt water runoff into late spring or early summer and shorten the period of low flows. Flows would also be higher during the snowmelt season. The effects of Wosa on aquatic life forms would be potentially more severe in the headwater streams because the effect on flows is greatest there. There will be an effect by interfering in the natural processes, in other words. And more of the knock-on effect. In addition, the greater the volume of water moving downstream at any one time, the greater the scouring action on the stream bed. Loose material needed by aquatic insects for shelter or by egg layers to anchor their egg masses may be swept away. 
quite destructive then. Mosquitoes can be expected as well as more ticks and other insects. Mosquitoes, ticks and flies spread disease. Increases in the numbers could contribute to a higher incidence of disease. It's not sounding good, is it? So now we go into silver iodide in the environment. A full-scale WOSA program in the Upper Colorado River Basin will use, on the average, an estimated 8,000 pounds of silver iodide per winter season, which is just under 4,000 kilograms, which is just under 4 tonnes. All of this is released to the atmosphere in the form of a smoke that is widely dispersed by the winds. Unpredictable then. Even by today's standards, where we can literally watch what the wind is doing live, it changes rapidly and can't be predicted. Some materials that are present in water, in low concentrations, can build up to dangerous levels in moving up through the food chain. A single cell organism may metabolise silver rather than being killed by it. A kind of insect feeding mostly on that organism would absorb the metabolised silver and fish that feed on that insect might have a high level of silver in their flesh. This is how the mercury level can become dangerously high in tuna or swordfish. So 25 years into the technology being used, there are uncertainties in our knowledge of the distribution in the environment of silver iodide from cloud seeding, the rate of decomposition of silver iodide in sunlight, the toxicity of soluble forms of silver to these various life forms, these uncertainties can all be reduced with additional research and field experiments, which, via the author's honesty, and obviously it's before 1984, isn't it? We can see there, much like how academics are behaving currently, the additional research and field experiments, which is then the field experiments, if you do them, it means you can get rid of uncertainties about doing it. You can work on the problems as they arise. But those problems can't be foreseen. And it's the weather. They're not making kettles where the element is slightly unaligned. And you can sort that out through additional research. It's the weather. 1974, after 25 years of the tech being out there. Again, I mentioned what a lot of us were educated in from the 70s onwards. Don't recall anyone ever mentioning this side of things. It's like Santa isn't real for adults, isn't it? So just a couple more points. WOSA may produce long-term environmental changes, but we don't know enough to predict how great or how extensive they might be. No major changes are likely to result directly from the kinds of snowfall climate and water related conditions that WOSA will create. However, unforeseen changes may result from the accumulation and interaction of many minor or indirect effects. Even if we could foresee such changes, we don't know how they might affect human activities or whether anyone would even care. Oh, we care. Let's just make that clear 45 years later. We will have the capability to modify the weather on a regular basis over widespread areas long before we could have a detailed understanding of its possible environmental and ecological effects. So our capability will be way ahead of our ability to predict what our capability will create, or what some of us call playing with fire. And to finish the WOSA program, could deal with problems as they become apparent. So it really is playing with fire. And the author states, deal with the problems instead of pretending there won't be any problems, which in 1974 was quite wise. Don't pretend there won't be any problems, which for those of you listening, where you know you've got active weather modification programs in place, that means prepare. Better safe than sorry. And if you're not sure what to prepare for, drought or flood, focus on those two. And whilst you're prepping, look after yourselves, take care, see you next time.